Welcome to Worship at Wycliffe. We're thrilled you've joined us today as we celebrate All Saints Day. As we begin our time of worship together, I want to remind you that our holiday food basket uh, collection is ongoing uh, throughout the month of November. And so if you wish to make either a monetary donation or a donation of food to fill those food baskets, please be in touch with the church office. With that being said, let us pray and prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We thank you, O God, that you give us time for gratitude and for tears, that you make us free to grieve, to remember, to honor, and to delight. For your Son reminds us, I am the resurrection, I am the life. Amen. Our gospel lesson today is taken from chapter 5 of the Good News according to St. Matthew, beginning with the first verse. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Here ends our gospel lesson. Into your hands O merciful Savior, we commend your servant. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive them into your arms of mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. These words are familiar to many. They're the words of commendation spoken at the end of a Christian funeral service. The glorious company of the saints in light. Today, we celebrate All Saints Day. All Saints Day has been a part of the Christian calendar, the church calendar for many years, and it began really as a kind of a catch-all day for the saints of the church as a way to clean up their calendar. And in the year 835, it was moved to be on November 1st. Of course, today, particularly for Protestant churches like Presbyterians, all Saints Day has a more personal connotation. It's not just all saints, it's our saints. The men and women that we knew, that guided us, that were a light in our lives, leading us in the way of faith. Today's recognition, 
recognizes those that have gone on to their eternal reward. So yes, it might seem that All Saints Day is a day day filled with grief and sadness. Maybe even a day that seems like a little defeatist. It is a day where we talk and think both about death, but as Christians we look beyond that single issue. We look beyond the fear of death and we look towards the hope and joy we have as Christians. Kate Bowler, whose name you may know from any number of her recent books, writes in her volume called No Cure for Being Human about a conversation she has with her son. Kate had been diagnosed with a stage 4 cancer. She had been going through treatments. There was a moment in time where it appeared that her cancer was in remission. Not that she would ever have it cured, but it was in remission. And her four-year-old son was obsessed at this time about how people aged. So her son looked at her and said, I was born it, and then I got bigger and bigger. And you are a baby, he said, pointing to his mother, Kate. But Grandma is buried, he says suddenly. They dug a big, big hole, and they put that lady in the dirt. Oh, love, Kate replies to her son. Great Grandma was really special. When she died, everyone was really sad, and they put her body in the ground. But we think that her spirit, the part that made Grandma special, went into heaven to be with God. That's why we were sad and also happy because we think we will see her again. She reports that her son at that moment was silent as he looked around his room. But moms do not get buried, he said sharply. It is a question as much as a demand. Oh no, sweetie, Kate says too quickly, commenting in her book, I was not ready. I am not ready. Moms do not get buried, he repeats, his eyes boring into mine. Normally, people get old before they die, Bowler finishes uncertainly. And then they be with God, he says. Yes, but I can't see God. Sometimes we feel God here, Bowler says putting her hand on her son's chest. If we are lucky, we see God in something really mysterious like a miracle, but mostly we see God in regular surprises like love and forgiveness. I think great-grandma is buried in the backyard, he says finally. We can dig for her and find her. Great-grandma is buried in Canada, sweetie. And even if we dig and we find her, she won't wake up. Bowler's son closes his eyes for a long minute. He looks at his mom and he says, Then lie down with me, Mom. How do we understand death? Grief, anxiety, and fear. Those are big questions. Kate Bowler's son, Zach, is beginning to try to put all that together. And of course, his mother, Kate, is in a double bind because she knows that before she is ready, she will likely die. But for now, she is with him. And for now, she can lie down and still wake up with him right next to her. So much of life happens in these ordinary, regular moments. They're moments that you and I have. And the task of a day like All Saints Day is is to help us remember. Yes, to remember the reality of death. 
but also to remember the joy of life. I think we all have those times when those two things collide. When the aching pain of loss collides with the joy of a memory of something that resides deep inside us that was set in there by someone we love. The saints in light. When Jesus sits down on the side of the mountain with his disciples, when he speaks and teaches them the Beatitudes, almost all of our Bibles render them blessed are challenge is that phrase blessed are most literally translated is happy are numerous New Testament scholars have attempted to work this out Presbyterian theologian Margaret Amer in a study called confessing the Beatitudes translates that word as greatly honored Maybe that's what Jesus is saying here. Greatly honored are the poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, the persecuted, the reviled. Greatly honored. How are they greatly honored? They are greatly honored by God's close presence in a special way. And that is a blessing. My colleague Patrick Johnson suggests that that's a blessing like the blessing of water when you are thirsty, food when you are starving, shade when you are scorched by the sun, and light when you cannot see the way ahead. The folks gathered around Jesus on the mountain that day, besides his disciples, were unlikely saints. They were the ones who were poor in spirit, who were mourning, meek, hungry, thirsty, persecuted, reviled. But they are saints indeed by God's presence. God's gifts are for them and God's care belongs to them. But they're not the only ones. You see, as, as Jesus speaks these words about those with phrases like poor in spirit and mourning and meek and those hungry and thirsty and merciful, the pure, the peacemakers, the persecuted, the reviled, Jesus casts a net that's far wider than what we would ever imagine. If you find yourself in one of those categories today, know that you are included in Jesus' formula for blessing. Just like the men and women so long ago on the side of the mountain with Jesus, you can be a living portrait of God's reign, not in your nobility, but in your need. God is with you. On this All Saints Day, we remember the saints gathered in light around God's throne. We remember our saints, those who lit the way for us. And then straining to see ahead, we recognize that we too will one day be numbered among the saints. Surely all of you today can remember someone to whom your heart is still connected. Someone whose story is entwined with yours. Give thanks to God for them.
And as you do, remember that they help to guide you on your journey of faith. Another story from Kate Bowler. She had a friend who asked her what she wanted to do, and they decided to go on an Appalachian zip line. So they slowly meandered their way up the mountain with a couple of guides, and when they got to the top, Kate was all clipped in, ready to go down that zip line. She says the wholesome face of the second guide appeared beside her, smiling. Are you feeling okay? she asked Kate. Yes, Kate replied in an unnaturally chirpy voice. It's just that I have been almost dying recently. Kate says she looks down a few hundred feet below her own to try to wriggle her toes, and nothing happens. The guide says, Ah, I see. Kate says, I spend a lot of time trying not to die, so I can't tell if I'm being reasonable right now. The guide looks at her and says, fear feels the same. Kate says, yes, it does. So maybe I should just stay here. Then the guide gently explains that she could do that. But then she invited Kate into her story and noted that she had an illness, the guy did, and she had to have one of her lungs removed a few years prior. But ever since, she has been testing her limits. Kate says by the time she is done hearing the guide's story, they are seated comfortably dangling in the air. Her hand is loosely gripping the rope above her. The guide says everything is a risk. There is something kind of wonderful about being afraid when you remember that not all risks are equal. Kate says it takes great courage to live. There are fears and disappointments every day. And in the end, the hero dies. But then she says... Out loud, yells, in fact, to no one in particular, Are you ready to take some mitigated risk? Ready, says her friend. Set, says the guide. Go, said Kate, to no one in particular. Because she had already started sliding down that Appalachian line. You and I are called to live in God's light. We are clipped in to an unbroken zip line of saints that cheer us on, that remind us of who we are and teach us who we are and whose we are. We belong to God. Therefore, our risks have been mitigated. And we can live fully knowing and expecting the future God has promised. Amen.
Let us pray. Most holy God, on this sacred All Saints Day, we gather together in worship to honor and remember those who have gone before us, the saints who have left their mark on our lives and the world. We come before you with gratitude in our hearts for their faithfulness and the legacies they have left behind. Lord, we thank you for the saints who have shown us what it means to love and serve you wholeheartedly. They have been examples of faith, perseverance, own faith in meaningful ways. We remember their selflessness and dedication to your kingdom. And we pray that we may follow in their footsteps. Oh Lord, as we reflect on the lives of those who've gone before us, we are reminded of the hope we have in Christ. We are comforted by the knowledge that they are now in your presence free from pain and suffering. May their lives continue to inspire and encourage us as we navigate the challenges of this world. Lord, we give thanks for the friendship, companionship, and we cherish the memories we've shared. Oh Lord, we know grief is a journey that looks different for everyone. We ask that you bring comfort to those who are continuing to grieve by granting them peace in their hearts. Lord, as we celebrate the communion of saints, help us to remember that we are all called to be saints in our own right. Strengthen us to embrace a life of holiness, seeking to love and serve you with our whole being. May we be a light in the world, just as the saints before us have been. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Holy ones of every time and place, climbers of the ladder of paradise, all runners of the celestial race, faithful shepherds of the master's flock, O great cloud of witnesses, stand here beside us. Jesus, our Liberator and Redeemer of all, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, stand here beside us. My friends, go out into the world embracing all that life has to offer, its hopes, its joys, its disappointments, and its failures, and know that God is with you and the great cloud of witnesses, all those saints in light that have gone before, are cheering you on. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance towards you and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.